new videos every day. So to talk a little bit more about this energy de uh, deficit that I've mentioned, um, the energy deficit is not the same as the sense of hunger that we feel. Um, our sense of hunger is a very um, separate mechanism from the, uh, from the body's understanding of how much energy it has, how much any energy reserve it has. Um, and so by eating foods um, that are, are requiring more energy of your body, um, hunger is one of the things you will feel, but the energy deficit that I'm really talking about um, is really in terms of the amount of ATP um, in your body. So ATP are the molecules um, that we create um, after we ingest a food and all of that, and it actually goes through and um, through a pros process of aerobic respiration, um, turns that plant energy, um, the photons, into ATP which are usable um, uh, energy molecules um, that are then dispersed all throughout the body um, and are essential to every single chemical process that your body does. Um, there is not a chemical process that can go on in your body without ATP. Um, some of them uh, exist to where the process itself will create, uh, will recreate that ATP so you end up with a net of zero energy used. Um, but chemical reactions cannot happen without, um, without that energy, without that ATP. So when you think about eating a food um, that's maybe deplete of the enzymes or nutrients that are needed and your body's going into an energy deficit um, to use it, other aspects of your body are going to suffer because the whole um, concentration of energy in your body um, is, a, is constant. And uh, if one process is using, you know, is uh, using all of that energy, then the other ones are going to start to drop off. Um, so emotion is one of the first, um, one of the first things that will go when our body is in an unhealthy state, or when you get real sick, and your body is working really, really hard just to fight off your fever, just to keep you well, just to, you know, if you're fighting off a bug, your body's working really, really hard, and that's why a lot of times we get very depressed. Um, when we're sick because all of our body's energy is going towards us just being well and a lot of that energy is being taken away from fueling our um, emotional system uh, and we will get sad in turn um, and that kind of is a brief you know I think that that thinking of the body when it's sick and the way that you feel when you're sick and you just feel weak and you feel like you don't have any energy um, that's really what's going on in your body um, if you are eating foods that are demanding more energy to digest um, than, uh, than foods that you're putting in your body that are, that are giving it energy. Um, so you've got this kind of sick, run down um, feeling going on, and maybe you don't feel that on the outside, but that doesn't mean that it's not going on on the inside. Um, so one of the biggest issues um, with all of this uh, food modification and indi industrialization of the food, in food industry um, is that energy deficit. So what happens um, to all of those things uh, that your body is climbing uphill to try and digest or get rid of? Um, if something is not easily expelled from the body, and again, chemical reactions that are necessary to expel it from the body, so that is, a, is an uphill process in itself, um, as well, uh, your body is going to just start sequestering those toxins or um, uh, harmful, harmful molecules, however they may be. There are certainly lots of them uh, that we'll go into later. Um, but the idea is that if your body is unable to dispose of it and get rid of it, it's going to sequester it. It's going to find some place in the body where it can store it um, and, uh, and, and hope to deal with it later. Um, of course, as most of us know, when we put something away to take care of it later, um, we generally don't get back to it, and that's often what happens um, in the body. And so um, we'll, we'll talk in a different video um, about cancer, but um, cancerous cells are a very um, poignant example of something like that um, because if you have sequestered a lot of toxins um, and harmful molecules into one part of your body, um, the cells around it are going to be depleted. Again, back to that idea of you have a constant amount of energy that's available to all of your body at any given time. 
Um, and if your body is expelling a lot of energy just to keep these sequestered molecules from harming the other cells around them, um, those other cells will be affected because they won't be able to use that energy. Um, they're going to um, lose nutrients, they're going to lose their strength, um, and any time that you're Anytime that you're affecting um, cells in a negative way, each and every one of their processes is affected. Um, that's DNA replication, that's cell repair, that's whatever normal function the cell is supposed to be doing, whether it's your liver, liver cell or your skin cell or your heart cell or your um, you know, type uh, blood cell. Um, all of these different cells have their own sets of proteins, their own sets of processes, but they all require ATP. And they're all going to be um, negatively impacted um, if you've got um, a trouble zone in your body, so to speak, of harmful or toxic molecules that are having to be sequestered because they cannot be broken down. Um, when we talk about um, our bodies having to undo any of the processes that are done to the food um, before it's able to use it, um, you kind of understand why these very long complex chemical names um, might be hazardous um, because each one of those um, parts of the chemical name is some chemical process that was done to it. So in this situation, um, which is inevitable, uh, that we ingest something that our bodies are, are unable to break down and easily expel and easily deal with, um, the first thing your body is going to do is sequester them. Um, so find somewhere that it deems is a reasonable place to just store um, these molecules uh, in the meantime, uh, which of course, as most of us know, when we put something away to address it later, um, it rarely ever gets addressed. And that's really what happens in our bodies. Um, so um, inevitably, we are exposed to toxins and different chemicals, um, both natural and unnatural. Um, and our bodies um, will find different things to do with them. Um, our natural process of aging um, comes from that general inevitable situation um, where our bodies have, have uh, some toxins or some molecules that they can't deal with and they have to store um, and they cause just a general degeneration um, which is perfectly natural in the human body. Um, now we'll talk more about aging later um, and really uh, talk, of, talk a bit more detail um, about all the different parts of aging and how it works. Um, but the reason that I mention it um, is just to let you know that um, our bodies are built to be able to handle um, a certain amount of toxins um, um, and things that are harmful. Um, our body is able to deal with them. Um, our body is equipped and prepared um, for the fact that there, at some point, um, is going to be something that enters in your body that it's not going to be able to just cleanly um, take care of. Um, the, when it becomes an issue um, is when you are um, bombarding your body with things that it can't take care of um, or um, it loses its capacity uh, for dealing with those things maybe because its energy pool is being spent in other areas. Um, so inevitably what that leads uh, to in some conditions um, is that those sequestered toxins and molecules um, begin to draw away nutrients and energy um, from all of the cells around them. So anywhere in your body that these um, particular molecules, um, harmful toxins are being stored, um, the surrounding cells are going to suffer. Um, and you will have um, you know, lack of functioning. Uh, their general cell processes will just be um, somewhat compromised. Um, and the, uh, you know, Certainly the take home message here is that we want to, um, as best we can, mitigate the amount of harmful um, complex chemicals that we bring into the body um, because those are the things that the body cannot, uh, cannot deal with as well and you'll end up in that energy deficit with a very steep uphill climb of your body just trying to deal with them. All of this um, can be um, fixed, helped, assisted, um, by just incorporating more fresh fruits and vegetables into your diet. Um, so there is, well, I can't say not a single one of us, but certainly not very many of us, and certainly not me, um, who can say that they do not eat a single thing that is har harmful to their bodies ever. Um, all of us do it, it just happens to all of us. Um, and as we, you know, kind of talking about the industrialization of the food industry, 
um, a lot of it is being done to us and to our food um, and is really beyond our control. And why I say that we as consumers just need to be educated. Um, because in a lot of instances, um, the food that is most accessible, the food that is least expensive, the food that is uh, most advertised and most well-known, uh, most likely to have your kids screaming and jumping and begging for it in the grocery store, um, a lot of these times are not the healthy foods um, that we need to be eating. Um, so it's okay. Uh, the, the, the idea is not to be so hard on yourself for eating those foods, but to recognize when you do eat them, um, that you want to recharge your body um, by eating a whole lot more um, really good, healthy whole foods, uh, maybe in a later meal or maybe even the same meal, um, to kind of counterbalance that and to provide your body um, more energy so that you're not ending up with a deficit of energy. You're actually able to supplement by um, putting a lot more good stuff in your body too. Thank you so much for listening today, and I hope that I was able to leave you um, with some helpful advice. Um, one of the most important things um, when we're talking about science and we're talking about nutrition um, is just to not feel overwhelmed. Um, it's all uh, very, um, you know, uh, made to be very complex and they teach us all these different processes and names. Um, but the whole idea of simple science is that I want to bring you concepts that you are able to grasp and that you are able to um, apply in your everyday life and feel confident in um, and not feel that science or nutrition are a mystery to you or that you can't understand them. Um, it's all very, um, very simple. And, and really, of course, my, my take home message today is um, to be eating just as many whole foods and fresh foods as you can. Um, and in a situation where you're maybe not eating so well, you can maybe have um, a salad or some other raw uh, fresh vegetable to counteract that. Um, and really just staying positive and knowing that you are doing your absolute best. Um, thank you for watching. Be sure to um, tune in in the future. I will talk more um, about industrialization of the food industry, um, about enzymes and their role and um, how depleting enzymes is harmful to us. We'll talk more about photosynthesis and energy um, and anything else you'd like to hear, feel free to please leave me a comment or a question, a suggestion of a topic you'd like to see addressed, and I hope to see you again soon.